There's a common misconception that forestry involves land clearing, but that's not the case. No, some forests are managed for timber production, but all forests are managed for their biodiversity. That is the birds, the bugs, the plants, the animals. And there is some new research which shows koalas are thriving in state forests. They're one of our most iconic forest dwellers. Experts call them a cryptic species, asleep for most of the day, coming out to forage and socialise under the protective cover of darkness. At first glance, you might expect timber harvesting to have a big impact on koala populations, but a new, large-scale study has found that's not the case. The results are amazing. We're actually getting really high koala occupancy across a lot of different forest tenures. We're seeing high occupancy rates in logged areas and unlogged areas. So um, really healthy koala populations. The three-year study by the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and Queensland University of Technology has focused on northeast New South Wales. It's an area that's long been managed for sustainable timber production. It's also been at the forefront of habitat protection for what was considered a low-density koala population. For many decades now we've known that and the results are just confirming that you know, koalas are still living in state forests and are still thriving in regeneration forests. Surveying for koalas isn't as simple as you might think. In the past, it has involved skilled people on the ground who know what to look for. Peter, koalas, I imagine, are difficult things to count, would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, very difficult to count because they sleep so much during the day. <laughs> they're hard to see, they're almost impossible to see. Impossible to see because they're high in the canopy, often in forks of trees, sitting dead still. Yeah, right. So you have in your hand there some uh, koala scat or koala poo, as I call it. Yeah, that, that's, that's right. Um, so in the past, we've used koala scats yep. to identify where the koalas are sleeping. So you fossick around at the base of a tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just do a quick search around the tree and pick up the scats and, and identify them through the scats. Yeah, right. Eh? Times have changed though. Very much so. The old approach was successful in locating koalas, but koalas are still so hard to find in the bush, which has called for some fresh thinking. Dr Brad Law is the principal research scientist on the study. Well, we've used a new approach to surveying koalas. That's, I guess, the first thing. So we've used sound recorders out in the bush to record the male koala grunting during the, the breeding season. And we found that that's been a really good survey technique to record whether the koalas are present or not. And um, we surveyed about 200 sites throughout the broader region, and we found much higher detection rates than um, has previously been known. The new technique allowed for a much more ambitious survey, but with that ambition came an unprecedented mountain of data. That's a female koala. That's a koala. That's a koala. So you've been recording the forest for three years. You must have hours and hours and hours of this stuff. How do you go through it? Yeah, we've got 14,000 hours of recordings, so um, it's impossible to sit down and listen to it all. Um, so we've got a collaboration with Queensland University of Technology yeah. and they've developed a computerised algorithm that will go through and search for that, particularly this pattern of the male bellow. Right. Okay, so they're quite unique and they sort of always do this sort of pattern. Yeah, so what they're doing when they're producing that bellow or grunting sound is they're in, uh, exhaling and it's sort of reverberating in the back of their throat and they do a big snort inhaling. These are the snorts. Can and uh, it's the same sort of pattern. Can you do it? You can do it. I can do it. Very, very cool. <laughs> these song meters, um, you know, they're, they're a much more scientific way of doing things. The scat surveys that we were doing in the past, they were really hit and miss. Uh, whereas these song meters are reliable. We know, we know what the results mean and um, yeah, it gives us a lot more confidence, I guess, in our action. To say the new technique has been a success would be a bit of an understatement. The survey found that across the range of test sites, koala occupancy ran at around 64%, which is more than five times the level predicted by surveyors using traditional techniques. 
totally surprised. A very unexpected result because a lot of work has been done in the area before. Uh, maybe not quite so much in these hinterland forests, but the general view is that koalas um, occur in pockets here and there, but they're not necessarily widespread throughout the forests. And that's really quite different to what we found.